Well, joining me now, our good friend, president of the National Action Network and host of Politics Nation, Reverend Al Sharpton. As usual, my friend, in your car, getting ready to come to work. But we're glad to see you, Rev. Look, that comment about black jobs from Trump, it's got a lot of people talking. Then, by the way, the guy goes and doubles down at his rally on Friday in Virginia. I mean, take a listen to this again. Here it is. They're taking the black jobs, people that have had their jobs for a long time are losing their jobs, and Hispanic jobs, people that have had them for a long time, they're losing their jobs. And you know who else is the biggest loser is going to be the unions. Um, what is Trump inferring there? It is the most racist statement that he's made in the last three days, because he's made them a long time before that. You've got to remember, Donald Trump said black jobs, and he talks about how blacks relate to him because of his mugshot. So he has criminalized blacks, saying that we relate to mugshots because we are innately criminal, even though, yes, we have fought criminal justice system unfairly, He's always been on the other side, like what he did with the Central Park case. But what he won't discuss here is the people prosecuting him in New York and Georgia are black prosecutors that we voted to get in office. So that's not the system. It's those of us that rebelled against the system and got black prosecutors in. Now he uh, tries to say black jobs. What jobs are black? What are the kind of jobs that migrants, illegal migrants, are getting here? Mostly jobs that most American citizens, including blacks, were not trying to do. And uh, maybe somebody ought to tell Mr. Trump that this is the 21st century. We have blacks now that are CEOs in major corporations. We have black billionaires all the way down to people that work every day uh, in in labor jobs that that are are, are, are are everyday jobs. But a black job has never been monolithic since slavery, or at least since Jim Crow. So it shows you the mentality of Donald Trump when it comes to blacks. We're either not uh, uh, legal because we're criminals, we like mugshots, or we do labor that uh, migrants can come in and take over right away. Both of them are absolutely offended racially, which is why, as much as I was concerned about uh, 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 Joe Biden performance the other night, I was very upset when one or two questions, he seemed to not be able to get to his answer. I'm more concerned about all the things Donald Trump did answer. Hmm. And let's let's get to Biden's lackluster performance during the debate, because, you know, it's got many Democrats. It's got a couple major newspaper editorials calling on him to step aside. You're familiar with the campaign. And before I ask this question, let me just say I've been asking it in the two and a half hours preceding our conversation that I've been on the air. And not a one has said that it's likely he will step aside. Do you join that group? Do you think he should not step aside? I think that uh, uh, he certainly, uh, unless there are some things that we don't know health-wise, and I don't believe there are, should not step aside. And he should not be forced to step aside because he had a bad debate. I ran in 2024. People have bad debates. Uh, I think that it was alarming, but I don't think it was disqualifying. I just flew back into New York. I preached this morning at, at in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. This is in North Carolina. Those people in that church are not uh, talking uh, to me when we were in and out about Joe Biden or the pullout. They were more offended on, on uh, Donald Trump acting like every problem in America is because the migrants came across the border. Oh, so when you're dealing with addressing a pandemic that he mishandled, the migrants caused that? The people that died because of his mishandling, the migrants caused it? That? Do we have a problem at the border? Absolutely. But we can't blame everything that came across the border with record unemployment under Donald Trump generally and black unemployment was not caused by the explosion at the border. It was the explosion when his administration would not let Dr. Fauci and other people do what needed to be done in a timely way. 
Okay, which begs this question then, because recent NBC News polling shows 87% of black voters backed President Biden in 2020. That support has slipped now to 71%. Why is the president losing the support of black voters? Do you believe those poll numbers? I don't believe those poll numbers, and I think that those poll numbers will change the more uh, blacks start hearing about black jobs, the more they understand Donald Trump's record. Let me explain something to you. You know that I've been involved on the front lines for decades, and particularly in New York, his hometown. Donald Trump has never supported blacks in a fight against criminal justice. He was always on the other side. He called for the execution of five innocent young black and brown men. So people are not going to be fooled once the message is out there. And I think, again, you can look at the polls in 2020. They were up and down about black voters. At the end of the day, how many black votes did he get? And he rolled out a bunch of black luminaries and black uh, 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 people that, that were in sports and all that, people are not going to get offended. I cannot tell you the amount of people that I know National Action Network and our chapters around the country that were outright offended. I'm talking about even black Republicans when they said that blacks relate to my mugshot. One, because hmm. he's calling us criminals. And two, it's black DAs that's prosecuting him. <laughs> Willis in Atlanta and Alvin Bragg in New York. What is he talking about? Yeah, um, well, please, that's rhetorical because I can't possibly answer that. Let me ask you this, though. Um, it, it has to be more from the Biden campaign than just saying Donald Trump doesn't work for you and here's why. What is the message Joe Biden needs to deliver to black voters that will inspire them think, to stick with him? I think that you're right. And I think he's uh, tried to deal with some of it the other night. Uh, but it needs to be more concise and he needs more validators to do it. We have the lowest black unemployment uh, uh, numbers in the history of this country. We've never had black unemployment where it is now. Still higher than whites, but it's lower than it's ever been. When he talks about how he has given uh, more money, four times more money to HBCUs than Donald Trump tried to brag about what he did. When you deal with the wealth gap, between blacks and whites has narrowed under Joe Biden more than we've seen any president in the last few decades. When you look at the fact that black women and white women wealth gap is almost equal now, he, he has delivered in terms of real data stuff to the black community. It just needs to get out there. And if you compare that, let, let, let's remember uh, uh, when we talk about this, if you compare that to Donald Trump, don't ever forget the largest civil rights case in the last two decades was George Floyd. Donald Trump was president under George Floyd. Mm -hmm. He would not support the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. He called the family, never said he denounced what happened to George. They felt that he wasn't listening to them. He was president then. And the only action he took was he went and had the Secret Service and security move protesters from in front of a church across the street from the White House. And rather than say we need to deal with police reform, he de announced he denounced the marches and said if the looting starts, the shooting starts. He mm -hmm. had every opportunity to show he understands blacks are pain with George Floyd, the highest profile case we've had in 20 or 30 years. He was on the other side of that. Okay, Reverend Al Sharpton, uh, I thank you for our conversation as well.